Hey everyone, this is Taylor, aka Northern Cartography, and welcome to my first video tutorial. Uh, I say first because it's possible I make more in the future, but I, I don't really have any direct plans at the moment, just, uh, but you know, who knows. I'm going to go ahead and apologize up front in case I make mistakes during this tutorial. It's literally the first time I've ever made something like this, so it might be complete shit. Um, making this video uh, mostly to just kind of make it easier for people that um, that want to download and use my maps um, and put them on Rule 20. Um, this video is going to show them how to align it properly with uh, the Rule 20 provided grid. Um, I am aware that there are other established virtual tabletops out there like Fantasy Grounds and, uh, and definitely a handful of ones that are in development. Um, but I haven't used any of them, so those will have to wait for another tutorial, uh, maybe. Anyways, I'm just kind of going to go through it step by step. You've, you've got a view here of my, my desktop here. So um, the first thing you want to do other than um, boot up Roll20, and I assume you've already figured out how to download a map of mine, is um, make sure that you're using the JPEG version of the map. Um, the file size on the PNGs is much too large to put into Roll20 bogs things down so um, find the JPEG and you either right click and go file properties for a Windows computer and with a Mac you just right click and go get info it pops up this window and it'll tell you the dimensions of the image um, my images are always multiples of 140 because every square is 140 pixels on my maps um, that's what Rule 20 recommends um, as their quote-unquote high res um, so that's what I've been using so um, just take note of that dimensions those dimensions for now um, and then when you're in Roll20, you, um, you click to add a new page. You have it here. You can swap to the page right away. And then you go into the page settings right here. Um, and you'll note here it says one unit equals 70 pixels. So you got to do a bit of math, which is why I've got the calculator down here. So you take my image size, which is 4,200 pixels. You divide that by 70, and that'll tell you how many Roll20 units the images across so 60 by 60 so you just take that 60 you punch it in here you'll also note that 60 is twice my grid size right here so whenever any of my my map files are available I include um, a gridded version and a non gridded version um, the version with the grid the file name will have the size of the grid in it so that's another little way you can um, determine the page size on rule 20 without having to use a calculator or do any math whatsoever so Anyways, long story short, you take that 4200, divide by 70, you get this 60, and you punch it in here and here. Um, next thing you would do is change the scale to one unit equals 2.5 feet. Um, essentially, um, because their Roll20 default unit is 70 pixels and my squares are 140 pixels, you'd want one unit to equal half of what a square should represent, which is 5. So. Anyways, it's 2.5, just follow along and uh, trust me, it'll work. Uh, make sure the grid is enabled. You make the size two units, which is five feet, right? One times two is, or sorry, 2.5 times two is five. Uh, you turn down the opacity completely so you can't see the grid, but it is still there. Um, you hit okay, so you're done editing your page settings. You go to upload your image file. I just click and drag, but you can find it from whatever file folder you've saved the image to. It'll give you a little upload complete message at the bottom when it's done. Just make sure that you're on the map and background layer as well when you're doing this. It's upload complete, so you can close that. Scroll down. And it's right here. You just simply click and drag into the virtual tabletop. You can zoom way out if you want to and then you can see the entire tabletop now you've got this this image file that is absolutely tiny and completely unusable so all you need to do to resize that quickly rather than playing with the nodes and dragging it and stretching it just right click on it go advanced set dimensions now here you can either set it by pixels which we know which is 4200 by 4200 or you can set it by units which we also know which is 60 by 60 so I'm just going to do it by pixels because that's my personal preference hit set now the image is exactly the right size and you just need to move it over like so and now when you zoom in you've got the image um, all ready to go and when you drag and drop creatures or tokens you'll notice they snap perfectly to the grid that I've drawn in the image file itself because the, the roll 20 grid still exists it is just invisible 
Um, so it snaps perfectly. Your measurement tool will work. It counts out the number of feet. Um, and even larger monsters will also take up the larger amount of space by default. So uh, that's about it. Um, there's not a lot more to it. Um, I just wanted to make this, like I said before, I just want to make this video so that you guys kind of have a, a, I guess, a better understanding of kind of my thought process when I'm making these maps. Choosing the 140 pixels um, is just a standard that I've decided to go with from, from the early stages onwards of my map making. And um, everything I draw basically follows that scale. So um, while you can change the grid settings yourself, um, let's say you want the grid to be twice as many squares and you want to make it visible by turning up the opacity, you still have you have twice as many squares and it's still usable. So if you want to double the size of this map, that's totally your prerogative. Um, there's just a few things that the scale would be completely off on. Like these cots here, they're now clocking in at what looks like about 12 feet if you're using a square equals 5 feet, right? Um, same thing with this bed, it'd be a bit large. Uh, but you absolutely can do that. Um, it's just my maps are designed. The optimal settings, quote unquote, would be as as follows. Just like that. So, okay, well, thanks for tuning in. Um, maybe I'll be making more video tutorials in the future, but this is definitely the first one. Um, thanks for watching and uh, take care. Happy campaigning.